how to configure RAID on a Mac. Before we do get into that, please do subscribe, clicking on the button and on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. So we're now gonna cross over to my Mac, Mac OS Big Sur. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. We're also gonna talk a little bit about RAID when we're setting up the different options to sort of let you know which RAID configuration works best for you. All right, so logged into our Mac. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to open up the disk utility. That's the main application that we're gonna be using to go and actually configure um, all of our USB sticks. Now what we've done is I've got three USB sticks that I've connected into my computer, 16 gig each, and we're gonna create a different RAID combinations for these so that you can actually then go and use them uh, on your Mac, which is actually really, really nice. So let's open up disk utility. Now you can access this by going into the finder, applications, utilities, and then disk utility. You can also go in the very top right hand corner into our spotlight and in there type in disk utility and it's opened up right there. Now um, I've got three hard drives here, as I said, three USB sticks. Two of them are already blank, which is good. The other one's still got some data, but what I'd recommend is just as a good practice, just go and erase any data on those first. Uh, you don't wanna have any data on them. Um, even though when you create the RAID, you're gonna delete all the data on there anyway, but um, it's always good to just go and wipe them first. So I'm just gonna go into this one here, which I know has some data, and I'm just gonna erase it and erase. It'll just wipe all the data off there, and then I'm just sure that you know it's good to go. All right, so that process is now complete. So I've got my three hard drives right here. Now from within Disk Utility, on the very top left hand corner, you've got your taskbar for Disk Utility. You're gonna select File, RAID Assistant. Okay, so let's click on that. So RAID Assistant opens up and we're presented with three different options. Uh, striped, which is a RAID 0, Mirrored, RAID 1, and concatenated, which is a JBOD or just a bunch of disks. RAID 0, generally you grab a whole bunch of disks and you can make uh, a bigger disk as a result of that. The intended goal of the RAID 0 is uh, speed. That's really what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab all of our disks and we're just gonna get the most performance out of um, those disks where possible. The mirrored RAID 1 is an exact copy of set of data of two or more disks. This type is useful when read performance or reliability is more convenient, more important. So you're gonna write data onto more than one disk. So if one disk fails, then you don't lose the data. Of course, the whole purpose of a RAID 1 or a mirrored is for redundancy. So you have two disks, you write data, and then if a hard drive fails, in our case, I've got a few USB sticks. If a USB stick fails, I don't actually lose my data because the other USB stick has got the data on it. And then the last one, concatenated, which is a JBOD, which also stands for just a bunch of disks, is uh, disks, it's not a RAID. It's a group of disks connected together for the purpose of creating a larger disk. So let's just go through each one. First one being a striped, a RAID 0. So let's select that. We're gonna click on next. Now here are my hard drives. Now, as I said, I've got three connected, which you can see right here and they're all 16 gig or give or take, 16.01, 15.84, 15.84, so round it out to 16. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select those three and essentially we're adding the disks that we want to use as part of our RAID 0, right? So I'm adding all of these disks that are meet, you know, meeting the requirements, that's what this is listed, and I'm selecting those three. We then select on next. We're gonna give this a name. So let's just call it, just for the uh, demo, we're gonna call it RAID zero. The format. Now, what format do we want to give it? Now, because this is a newer Mac OS, um, you can use APFS, which is the newer Mac OS format, or you can use the older Mac OS format. Of course, if you're doing it in APFS and you're grabbing those disks and moving them to a Mac that doesn't support APFS, you're going to have problems. And of course, this, these RAID collections are only really going to work on a Mac computer. So you're not going to be able to grab these disks and take them to a Windows-based computer. They're not going to work on a Windows-based computer. And of course, because they're part of the RAID, you're generally gonna keep all of these disks together as well. So we're gonna select just for now, APFS as our, uh, our format. You'll see that it's a RAID zero. Here's our capacity, 47.51 gig, because it's combining those, uh, those three right there. And you'll see that uh, the chunk size, it says for best performance, choose a chunk size that matches the size of the data you're accessing. So for example, video processing may access uh, larger chunks of data, but a database may access smaller chunks. So you just have to now be aware of well, what sort of data are we gonna be um, 
putting onto here. If it's a lot of videos, a lot of movies, you may want to go for a larger chunk size. If it's a lot of smaller size files, you go for a smaller chunk size. But let's just keep it in the middle, 64, because I may have a mix between all of those. Okay, and next. So create RAID 0, that's the name of it. Uh, here it is, it's array zero. I'm gonna create this, it's gonna permanently erase all the data on here, format them again, and erase everything, and then create that RAID. So click on create. So if everything is successful, you should see a nice big tick RAID created successfully done right there. Now in here, you'll see that there are now the three disks are still here, but there's also this thing called the RAID set, or you can select that, and you'll see that it's called RAID zero, and it's a striped set in a RAID zero. It's online, and here are my three disks that are part of it. And you see that now on my desktop, I've just got one sole disk that is 46.38 gig big. It's actually used all of those disks together and made one big disk, which is great, and you're gonna get a lot better performance. The only thing with this one is that you've got no redundancy. All right, so there's no redundancy in this RAID 0. So if I undo, if I remove one of those disks, if one of my USB, you know, I've got three USB sticks, as you can see right here, if one of these are removed, then I potentially lose that RAID. Is that something that you have to be aware of? Uh, because it's not foolproof, it's not redundant, it gives you excellent speed, you can take advantage of having a bigger pool of hard drives, you've got a lot more space, uh, but you've got a redundancy. So if I just removed one disk, I lose everything. So that's my RAID 0, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna destroy this RAID, so you can easily go into here and select Delete RAID. If you wanna remove that RAID altogether, delete, delete, and now it'll re-establish those three USB hard drives into three USB hard drives, USB sticks, and delete that RAID altogether. RAID is now deleted, we can say okay. Now you'll see that those three disks have now become uninitialized and the RAID is now gone, okay? So now we can go and create a new RAID. So we're going into the same, opening up the RAID Assistant again. We now can create a mirrored one, which is a RAID 1. Select Next. We can go through our three disks. So mirrored, as the name suggests, is it's doing an exact mirror of the data on one disk and then the other disk. So if a disk fails, you don't actually lose any data because the other disk is also got the same data written onto it. Now, of course, you don't, get advantage like in a RAID 0 where you can have all of the pool of disks together um, you know, and have it a much larger hard drive. You actually lose capacity, but you then get the advantage of the actual mirroring and redundancy of that data. So we're selecting those three and then selecting next. Very similar, let's call this RAID 1. And we're gonna also format this in an APFS. We're gonna leave the chunk size, leave it as 32 in this case, next. And then we click on create. That is done. Here's our RAID 1. Here's our three disks. Here is our RAID 1 right here. And uh, it's ready to go. So if a disk fails, if a USB stick fails, you don't lose any data. Okay, so that is the RAID 1. So similar, let's go and delete this RAID. And let's look at the last one. Generally for a RAID 0 and a RAID 1, I would recommend using the same size USB sticks. Uh, because if you have a mix and match, you're gonna get different results and you're generally gonna have to downgrade. So if you mix a 16 gig drive with an eight gig drive, then you're actually gonna take advantage only of the eight gig. It's gonna not use that extra space that you've got. So try to keep them consistent. The last option though is slightly different. So we're gonna select now concatenated, which is just a bunch of disks. Now what I've done is I've actually now connected a eight gig USB, removed one of the 16s, and now I've got now two 16s and one eight gig hard drive. So we can select next. Here they are, one 16, one 16, and one eight. Okay, so now it's a mix of three, two different sizes. Next, call this a JBOD. We're gonna also give it the same leave the rest as is, next, create. That is completed, we can click on done. Here's our JBOD, here are three disks, and a total of just under 40 gig. So really if you add 16 plus 16 plus eight, we get to our total number. So it's been able to use a different set of size disks, you're just bringing them all together and you're just making a larger hard drive as a result of that. Thank you so much for checking this out. Please do what you need to do on the social medias by liking, commenting, subscribing, clicking on the face over there to subscribe and also check out some of my other videos so that you don't miss out on anything that I'm releasing around all things tech. Thanks again, we'll see you next time.